Hey folks, so today I am going to talk a little bit about Ubuntu 19.04. I've been running it on my Entraware laptop, which is the laptop that I primarily use for clerical tasks, uh, admining uh, live streams, printing, all that kind of stuff. Basically stuff that doesn't involve multimedia or uh, gaming, but um, but some of the more sort of straightforward tasks that you'd expect out of a, a sort of a work uh, laptop. Um, it's uh, not particularly a it's not a particularly fast laptop, and it, that's by design because because it is the laptop that I do test a lot of distributions on. So running it on incredibly powerful hardware um, wouldn't necessarily give the best representation of all Linux distributions. Um, I've been running it now for probably over a week, since basically since 1904's release, and I've got to say, I've really been enjoying it. Um, Ubuntu 1904 is, or does seem to be, the most polished Ubuntu release, uh, certainly since they've adopted the uh, GNOME desktop environment, but actually I would say significantly uh, before then. So I'm going to uh, have a, give you a bit of a demonstration as to uh, the desktop environment itself that Ubuntu have put together from the GNOME desktop as well as a bit a little bit about the operating system itself but for today's video purposes I am going to be using a virtual machine uh, that you can see here uh, so this is this was installed today not too long ago just for this video but rest assured I've been testing the uh, distribution through its paces on bare metal so what you see here today isn't really going to be a true representation but rather just an idea of what the environment looks like so just to uh, start from the beginning, um, this looks really nice. Like this is a really nicely themed uh, GNOME desktop. Now they have some traditional desktop components that vanilla GNOME doesn't have. They have, for example, a system tray up in the top right hand corner here. They have a desktop icon, something which I'm not particularly um, you know, like I, I I could take them or leave them, to be honest. Uh, you've got a dock on the left-hand side. Now, this is always being displayed. So if you have a window open uh, here and then you can then maximize it, you still have it here. This is something, again, that is not um, in the vanilla GNOME desktop. You have to click on, like, the activities panel there and then... Um, then you will see that the panel um, so it does feel a little bit like the unity desktop sort of combined with the the gnome desktop it looks wonderful it's really nice and intuitive even though it doesn't take after any traditional desktop paradigms and a few people that i've been talking to say that that's actually quite a good thing that if you're coming to linux uh, coming to ubuntu from another uh, operating system uh having it in a similar um, layout with you know similar functionality on the surface can actually be a little bit disorientating when people find out that some of the you know uh, deeper down levels of the of the system are substantially different so you're sort of almost introducing people uh, to a like for like comparison when no such comparison exists beyond the superficial so having this desktop environment which is uh, different to Mac different to um, to Windows uh, it's different to to the mobiles as well although I would say that um, there is a there is not necessarily a mobile feel about the GNOME desktop, but it does seem of the mobile era. It seems newer. It seems like... Um and also, when people picked up an Android phone f coming from, from Windows, uh, you know, they, they adapted to a different uh, UI paradigm then, so there's nothing to say that, that, it's, uh, that a desktop necessarily has to emulate Windows. I only prefer desktops personally, and again, for personal preference, that I only prefer paradigms uh, similar to Windows insofar that... Um, that I prov I like the functionality in and of itself. Uh, I like that, uh, and, and I'm specifically talking about XFCE and Mate here, where you've got the file, you know, edit view menus across the top of the windows there, and um, I like you know the pan the, um, the 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 start the sort of the start menu panels that you've got there, like the whisker menu in XFCE. Um, but to me, I just feel you know I just like that setup because I feel that it's a good setup, not necessarily because it emulates uh, Windows. I just feel that that era of Windows actually seemed to do pretty well in terms of desktop UI but anyway that aside because that's a bit of a ramble this is still a very intuitive very straightforward desktop layout um, and uh, even though GNOME is not my primary desktop I sort of come back to it from time to time just to see how it's evolved and um, it's incredibly straightforward to pick up it's straightforward to uh, get to grips with it's very intuitive all of that kind of stuff so uh, all good on that front. Uh, now, I installed with the full application set, but you can choose to have a minimum installation setup where it only installs sort of the raw applications needed to run your system, and then you're expected to install uh, your personal choice of software on top of that. 
that uh, now I installed the full um, suite of tools uh, just to see what Ubuntu included. But I think most people would probably be happier, especially at, um, like Linux users that have been using Linux distributions for some time who already have an idea of what programs they want to use, would be more happy installing the minimal uh, installation setup and then installing your, your programs on top. The Ubuntu Software Center is really nice, really straightforward, has been for a long time now. It's very similar, if not identical, to the, the GNOME uh, desktop. Uh, the GNOME uh, uh, application manager. Uh, it's all, yeah, it's all incredibly straightforward. Um, personally, again, and this is just personal preference, I tend to drop straight down to the command line because I already have a good idea of the applications that I want to install. And um, when it comes to just sheer efficiency, dropping down to the command line when you already know what you're going to do and already know how you want to do it is just more uh, uh, straightforward and faster and more convenient in, in, in many more ways. So um, they got the editor's pick here, but searching things through. And in fact, you can even search through um, the applications menu here. So um, what I uh, did actually when I installed it is that I wanted to connect to IRC. And I didn't know whether or not hex chat was installed out of the box. So I did type it. And it was literally just, it was just so easy to install because I just clicked, I searched for it in the menu and it came up as an installation option there. So even though applications that I, I would have liked to perhaps have seen an IRC client included in the Ubuntu setup, I can kind of see why they didn't because um, a lot of casual users probably aren't really going to be using IRC. Installing HexChat is as seamless as they could possibly have made it. So that's 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 good I like that it's all straightforward um, so I'm going to just show a little bit of the uh, settings menu here a lot of this is known some of this has been tweaked by Ubuntu um, I made the dock smaller so the dock is I think is like 48 pixels by default which is like oh well there, there it is which is really large like it, it seems to be taking up a lot more of the screen than I expected so I dropped it down to 32 to be honest if I was using this um, uh, longer term, I'd probably drop it down smaller still. You can see more icons and um, it takes up less screen real estate. I, you know, so so that makes all sense. Very easy to change these kind of things. You can also drop the uh, uh, dock down to the, the bottom of the screen as well. Uh, all of these settings are, are intuitive and easy to understand and straightforward. Uh, they've got some good privacy settings here, so you can have that balance between um, privacy and convenience, you, you can turn off location services. A lot of these are asked on first boot as well, so you don't have to go through the menus uh, to work out all of these. Uh, but you've got, you know, usage history there, trash and temporary files there, uh, location services. It does ask you to sign into a, um, an online account as well. This is something that I'm not too fond of, again, from a personal preference point of view. Uh, I don't necessarily like the normalization of behavior that we need to link our operating systems to the cloud and then just upload in, uh, data that we don't always necessarily know what it is and when, uh, with, you know, w without you know, when, when when it's not necessary, when we don't need to. I don't really see too much of an advantage of linking Google into my operating system, linking Facebook into my operating system or Microsoft, uh, or even, you know, like Ubuntu. Like if it's not um, going to provide a really useful service, then I would much rather keep my uh, operating system uh, primarily um, local, you know, local based, as it were. Um, I can understand that other operating systems are going down this this direction and perhaps Ubuntu feels like it wants to uh, match the other operating systems in this regard. I'm glad that there's it's it's trivial to opt out, it's trivial to not bother with any of this. So again, it's a minor um it's a minor thought and a minor factor in the grand scheme of things, so um, the sound settings as well, really great, very intuitive from the settings menu here. This nice little settings menu, actually, you drop it down, uh, you can lock the screen, log out, uh, get your settings set up. And also another thing that I did like about this uh, settings menu here is uh, how easy and straightforward it was to set up uh, open VPN. So I could set up my VPN using this menu. I could choose my VPN and just select my VPN. Uh, really quick, easily from the menu, and it would then add another icon up in the system tray that would let me know the status of my VPN as well. So that's really nice, really straightforward, no additional inst uh, software needed to install. And that's actually one of the things that I really felt was um, 
uh, that I really liked about Ubuntu in this regard. Uh, often with Ubuntu, I usually find myself having to install something from a third-party repository of one variety or another because the uh, repositories didn't have what I was looking for. But this time around, I think uh, everything was catered for in the Ubuntu native repositories, um, I believe. Uh, so it does seem that there are new packages being added there, the one, especially the ones when it comes to my personal use cases, uh, like, for example, SyncThing GTK. So I think you can... Um, this is a really useful tool, and I've spelt it wrong as usual. Uh, there we go. Sync thing GTK. You can also install the web UI there. I like that it gives you the distinction between the two. Um, and again, I'm not entirely sure whether or not this is new to 1904, whether or not it was in 1810, but uh, that's a really useful tool. I'm glad to see it in there. Now, I'm really looking forward to seeing how these uh, improvements in Ubuntu um, manifest themselves in the next LTS, the next long-term support release for, um, for Ubuntu here, because it would um, make it would be a great user experience, I feel, if you have a long-term support release installed and then you used flat packs, snaps, or app images on top of that for more up-to-date software. I think that could provide a nice, um, a nice uh, sort of base level operating system that doesn't require too much maintenance, too many um, updates and upgrades and all of that kind of stuff, too much maintenance in general. And then you have the latest and greatest software from Flatpak, Snaps, and App Images on top of that. I think that's going to be a really nice um, end user experience when it comes to an operating system there. And um, uh, and 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 many uh, moving parts of that setup are, of course, distro agnostic as well. So, you know, you may not necessarily be the biggest fan of Ubuntu, but a lot of that setup then can be carried across to, to a Fedora release, to something on Arch uh, or, or SUSE as well. So uh, it, it, this is the wonder of, of, of Linux, is that you've got so many more options uh, available to you. And, uh, and it's great to see this, all of this uh, hard work and development come to fruition, and, and, and we are seeing it here. Also, one of the few adjustments that I did make to this um, distribution is I did have a quick check on the background. I know this is incredibly superficial, shouldn't even factor into the review, but, um, but it does include a few, of the, uh, a few nice background images there. That's a nice one as well. Um, which, again, it doesn't usually, you know, matter, but it does sort of demonstrate that just a little bit of thought has been given to the to the to the to the to the, to the little things, to the small things that um, aren't necessarily front and center, but the small details have been looked over, and and that is something that I do quite like um, in terms of it's it's a bit of a watermark in regards to um, the attention to detail of the the. Um, the minor aspects of a, of a distribution. So, uh, like I said, I don't really have too much to say here. A lot of this uh, is based on um, improvements to GNOME, uh, but also the tweaking and the polish that Ubuntu have done on top of that is really quite nice. This is a distribution I would happily put in front of someone new to Linux that wanted to experience a new operating system. Uh, it's intuitive. It's straightforward. If you're unsure, you can usually uh, search for something amongst the menus and it will give you what you want. Um, the to install new software is easy and straightforward. Uh, the command line is, of course, always uh, a useful tool there to have if you are not GUI inclined. Um, their software choices out of the box, although they're not necessarily entirely what I would choose, they're certainly sensible choices as well. Um, and also, it runs quite well in a virtual machine, actually. GNOME has always been a little bit funny when it comes to running in virtual machines. This seems actually to be uh, substantially smoother than before. I have installed MPV Media Player uh, because it is my personal preference uh, when it comes to uh, media players. Um, and also, it does give you... Um, what you call it, frequently viewed, um, was it frequently accessed applications there, which is always quite good. And uh, it is nice. I like how the dock works. The dock, um, uh, it, it took me a while to get used to the dock originally when I first came across, when I first uh, used GNOME. Uh, but uh, after a while, it's actually really quite nice just to have all these, uh, you know, have a lot of your, your tools by the side. The only thing that I would say that I would quite like and um, is, is the ability to minimize from the dock. Um, if you click on it like like you would with a normal taskbar, it, you would um, you know you might expect it to be minimized. And even if you right click, it doesn't seem no there isn't a way to minimize it there. So the only way to minimize it is either to use the minimize keys uh, the minimize buttons in the top right here, or to right click and then go 
minimize. Now, interestingly enough, when Ubuntu moved to GNOME, they moved their um, window manipulation uh, icons from the left to the right. But because GNOME does seem to be rather top left centric with a lot of its um, uh, UI, it almost kind of feels like it would make sense to have the uh, the the buttons there. In fact, I'm not entirely sure. Sometimes with some of the tweak tools, uh, you can actually. Um, I don't think we're going to get that option. Yeah, you might need to install like GNOME Tweak or something in order to uh, to change the position of those as well. Uh, but all things considered, I have been primarily using the vanilla version of Ubuntu with, you know, so I haven't been tweaking GNOME or, or installing extra themes or anything like that, just to, to sort of take in the um, experience of, of the intended Ubuntu desktop. It's really good, really intuitive, really straightforward, really user-friendly. Um, the only real complaint that I would have, and it, it, it comes with GNOME, is that it is a bit heavy on the memory, it is a bit heavy on the weaker um, uh, laptop machines. So, for example, with this Entraware Triton here, um, to use a GNOME-based desktop as my primary desktop environment would probably not be too wise. So I might be looking at Lubuntu, for example, or Zubuntu, or one of the more lightweight versions of Ubuntu, which might be a little bit more suited to it. That being said, this version of GNOME does feel faster. It does feel smoother. The f the fans seem to spin up less on the entryware. It seems to be uh, enjoying the ride a little bit more. So it's nice to see things trending in the right direction. But GNOME is a heavy set desktop, and I think that that is taken, you know, that is an accepted cost when it comes to all of the features and, um, uh, and, and, and straightforwardness that it offers. I like the idea that GNOME is a desktop that doesn't necessarily trip over itself to allow customizability, because having a standard desktop paradigm is more accessible to your non power users. And, and that's not necessarily like newbies. That could be people that use, you know, uh, desktops day in and day out who just are not fans of customization, who want to learn where the default positions are and happy to, to work around that. I am, to a point, that kind of user as well. Like, I'm happy to work with defaults on my Manjaro installation. I still haven't changed the theme. I've You know, all the layouts are, are, are very uh, default because teaching myself to work around the defaults um, allows me then to... Uh, have a more um, comfortable approach when I'm using other people's computers or computers um, that are, you know, fresh installs and things like that, uh, so that I don't become too um, habitually um, absorbed by my own customizations. But anyway, that's just a, a little bit of, of just a few thoughts of mine on the overall distribution. Uh, Ubuntu 19.04, wonderful distribution. Uh, best yet, I reckon. Um, and, uh, and especially if you've got the... Um, if you've got the hardware for the GNOME desktop, then this is a really good setup. Uh, if you don't, then um, it, the other uh, members of the Ubuntu family could very well be uh, what you're looking for. Um, and I will be giving them a go. And um, uh, there may be videos on this channel of my experiences with them. Not entirely sure yet. Let me know if you'd like to see that down in the comments section below, of course. Anyway, that's about it for me today. Thank you guys very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.